Hello guys and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this really cool abstract uh, render. Um, this is just a little bit of fun. I just think it's really cool. I'm going to even be covering these materials here. But the main idea here is just to make this kind of more complicated looking shape here. Put it inside of a cylinder with a boolean operation. And just make this kind of like abstract render. I haven't really done anything like this for a while. And I think it's kind of fun sometimes just to play around with and see where you can push these sort of concepts. So this kind of looks more like some sort of abstract ornament that you might have sitting on a table or something. Um, but I just think it looks really cool. I'm going to show you how to model this kind of really weird complex structure using just a bunch of modifiers and some really simple modeling. So if this is something you want to learn, this is definitely a beginner friendly tutorial. I'll go step by step and uh, I'll explain it nice and slow. So let's jump into it. I will be uploading the final result as well to my Patreon. Okay, so inside of Blender, we're going to select all of the default objects and we're just going to press delete. We're then going to go shift A and we're going to add in a plane. With this plane active, we're just simply tab into our edit mode. And with all of this active, we can right click and we can go subdivide. We can go over here to the subdivision tab and let's bump it up. And let's go with something, hmm, I think about six cuts should be fine for what we're doing here. In fact, let's go, let's go to seven. I think seven's good. Let's go with seven subdivisions. Let's uh, minimize this over here. And let's go to our face select option here. So we've got all of the faces are active. We're gonna press F3. I'm gonna type in this cool little thing called checker. So type in checker. You're gonna see something called checker deselect. When you click on that, it's gonna select everything else in a checker kind of pattern. So it's every other one, but in a checker arrangement, which is really cool. I've covered this before, um, but it's just really handy. I'm gonna go X and let's just delete only those faces. And now we have this thing here, right? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go E to extrude and then Z. We're gonna extrude this up about as much till these look as, as much as what would make these look like cubes. So you can see if I extend it this much, this looks like a rectangle. But if I go about this much, it roughly looks like a cube. And you can just eye that. that that should be perfectly fine. Just get it till they look like little cubes kind of touching each other at the corners, then go X and delete those faces. Now we have whatever this is. So we're going to go and give that under our modifiers a subdivision surface modifier. I'm going to tab back out and let's just bump this up over here to a number of two in the viewport. And let's go over here and do something. We're going to give this a solidify, which is not something I'd usually do with this sort of weird topology, but we're going to do it anyway. And let's go with something like this. And what we're going to do as well is we're going to tab into edit mode now. We're going to press A to select everything and we're going to go shift D to duplicate and we're going to move one and kind of offset it so that these become little squares in here. So the corners of each other square is in the middle of the other one. So you can see here what we've done. It should line up to make roughly these little squares like this, okay? So you can even see over here at the end here, we've got one square, and then the square of this one is touching the middle of that. And then we're gonna go G, Z, and we're just gonna move it up. And we're gonna move it up about halfway, like that. And we're gonna then tab back out, and at this point, um, let's just bump the level of the viewport up as well. Okay, that's looking really good. And let's um, now minimize this. And let's go over here to add modifier. And let's give this a remesh. And at the remesh, we're gonna come here and make it 0 0.02, like so. And let's enable smooth shading here so we can see what it looks like. And let's bump it up. Let's go 0 0.01, make this even finer. And that's looking pretty good. So let's now come and apply the subdiv, apply the solidify, and let's apply that remesh. Now we want this to be fitting into a cylindrical shape. So we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna add in a cylinder, and we're gonna select this thing here again, and we're gonna to go to our modifier. So let's give it a Boolean operation. Let's make it, uh, let's just grab the little eyedropper and see what happens. Let's just select that cylinder. And you can see um, the operation here is doing that. So let's just go with the intersect instead. And there we have it now in the middle. So let's come to the drop down and apply it like so. And now it is applied. Let's select this cylinder here. Let's go S, Z and scale it down onto Z. Let's go to our front orthographic like so. Uh, we want it about the same height as this thing here. So we're gonna select it, we're gonna go G, Z, and we're gonna bring it down and fit it inside of here, like that. 
We're then gonna select cylinder again. We're gonna tab into edit mode and let's select these two faces here and delete them. Press A to select everything and then go S, Shift, Z. So S, Shift and Z and just scale out a little bit. And then you're gonna go E to extrude and then you can go once again, S, Shift, Z and just scale that out along just the Y and the X. And the reason we're doing it instead of just scaling is that it only goes out along the X and the Y. So we're gonna give it a thickness of about this much. And then we're gonna tab back into object mode. And now with this, let's just go Control A and make sure to apply that scale because we scaled in object mode, which affects our transforms. Let's go to our modifiers and let's give that a bevel. Let's bring this amount way down, increase the segment, and let's give that a subdivision surface modifier. And let's apply both of those. Right click and let's go shade smooth. And now we have this object over here, which is looking really nice. Let's tab back out. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go with this one, just for now, give it a material. Let's just go new. This is called wood. We'll work on it in a little bit. Let's just grab this one here and go new. And let's just call it metal one, because we're gonna make two of them. So for now, we'll just call this metal one. And then with this one active, we're gonna hold in shift and select this one and then go control J and that's gonna join it all into one object. So let's go to our top view. We're still in object mode. We're gonna go shift A. Let's add in a cylinder or a torus. Actually, I should have said torus. We're adding in a torus, yeah. Tab back into edit mode and then go alt S and just scale this thing in along its normals. Alt S to make a ring like this and then go to your front view and then go G, Z and move it up. And then at your top view, you can scale it. And we just want to kind of be like a little rim that runs along here like this, kind of between these two, this one and this one here, like that. Just kind of blend it all together. And then we're gonna to go to front view, shift D and then move it down to here. So it's in the bottom side as well. Tab back out and then right click, go shade smooth, holding in shift, join, select the rest of it and then go control J now this whole puck is one object like this. Okay, tab back into edit mode. And uh, I forgot, just to select a face on both of these, go control L, just to select the whole unit. And let's just give it that metal material and go assign. Now we can tab back out. So now we have this thing done. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go R, X, nine, zero, and we're gonna press enter. Then we're gonna go G, Z, and we're gonna move it up till it's sitting on our floor. And let's go to our top view. Let's go R, let's rotate it slightly. Let's move it to the side. Shift D to duplicate, let's make another one and let's rotate it in like so. You can rotate them a little bit differently so they're not exactly the same. But the general idea is here, in our front view, we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a camera. We're gonna take that camera up and then move it back. Go into your camera view and I prefer to go to my camera settings and make the focal length 95 or something around there. G, middle mouse button while we're in camera view and just zoom back out like so. And then you can go shift A, you can add in a plane, scale it up as big as you want, tab into edit mode and then just select this back edge and extrude it up by pressing E and Z. And then you can select this edge here and go control B and make a bevel and then roll your middle mouse button to add in segments tab back out and also right click and go shade smooth. Now we have a nice backdrop. Make sure to go control A and just apply the scale just in case you wanna add a texture to it. But for now we're gonna go back into our camera view. In our camera view, we're gonna go control B or command B and just drag over the camera view and that'll limit the rendering to our camera. We can now go to our render settings and let's make it cycles. I'm gonna change my device to GPU. If you don't have one, it's fine. Just leave it at CPU. And we're gonna to go to our max samples down here and let's just make it 90, okay? You, I'm gonna go over lower value because I've got the denoiser and I'm doing the tutorial, but I'd recommend you guys go higher for your final result and not rely too much on the denoiser alone because you can get some artifacting. But over, other than that, I think we are doing well here. So we're gonna go Z and we're gonna go rendered. Then we're gonna go Shift A. Let's just quickly add in an area light, move it up. Let's make that 120 on strength. Move it up even higher, like so. And this guy, we're gonna go S, X, and just scale it along the X, like that. And then we're going to go into our front view and go Shift D to duplicate, and 
Let's move on to the back here and rotate it in, just so we got some nice rim lighting happening here. And then we're gonna go Shift D, move, duplicate another one, and let's let it rotate down like this to light kind of the front. We can now work on some of our uh, materials. So let's select our background. So let's go over here to our materials. Let's click New, and let's just make that guy a little bit darker, so we get more contrast here. And now we can work on these pucks here. So let's go into our shading workspace. Let's go into our camera view. We already created earlier that wood material. So let's just select that. And we can see this is our default principle. What we're gonna do, we're gonna come over here, we're gonna go Shift A. Let's search and let's type in noise and let's grab a noise texture. Let's plug the color into the base. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag this vector and we're gonna type in mapping get a mapping node. Then we're gonna grab this vector at the top here and drag on that. And we're gonna type in texture and then co-ordinate. So texture coordinate over here, select it. And let's make the ob show the object is what's actually plugged into this vector here on the mapping. And now we're gonna come over here and go shift A, search and get a color ramp for now. Place it over here on this cable. And now we're gonna just drag these values together so we get more contrast. And over here, I'm gonna go Z, I'm gonna go render, and let's see what that looks like. Okay, for now, I'm just gonna go Control and B, just to make a smaller render region so it isn't as processor intensive. And over here, I'm gonna go to the scale and make it 12. And then over here on the scaling, I'm gonna make this 30 over here. And that's gonna stretch that way out, which looks better. And let's come to the X and make it 12, like so. And now we kind of have this wood grain effect. But let's come to the scale here, maybe make it free. Something like that. Um, just wanna make sure we got the right kind of thing happening here. So this would be correct because over here, we got the grains of the wood stretching, but over here we're seeing the grain of the wood more head on, which is kind of what you would see if this was made out of one piece of wood, which is kind of correct. So let's go into our camera view. And now let's give this some color. We're gonna come over here, let's grab this one. Let's make it a bit lighter in the value and make it kind of like a dark woody color. And then grab this white one here and let's make that kind of like a barky kind of wood color as well. And you can make whatever wood you want. Study some different references so you get something you like, but I'm gonna go with this. And then I'm gonna come here to the roughness and I'm gonna increase that as well, just to really make that look a bit more woody. And then I'm gonna come here to my roughness under my principle and just turn that down to make this more reflective. I'm gonna go Shift A, search, get a color ramp. Again, plug this color from the texture output into the color ramp. I'm gonna drag this up quickly so you can see more. And let's take this down and let's go Shift A, search and get a bump. Color, plug the height into here and a normal into the normal of the principle. And let's just give this a strength of 0.2. And now this has a little bit of bump to it. And this is a nice looking, easy beginner's wood material. We could definitely get more advanced, but for now I'm gonna keep it simple. We're now gonna go Control B and just make the render the border of the camera bigger, bigger for the rendering. And now we can see this is what we have. Um, I might just take that um, strength down even more on that bump, just something like this. Just slightly, because we want this to look nice and smooth. Now we can select this inner, um, actually let's go to the metal one material. And now all we have to do here is come and give it a color of your choice. Be as creative as you want. I recommend going for nice metallic, like so, and then bringing that roughness down just a bit. So here it kind of looks like gold a little bit. What you could do is you could select the other one and then come to this metal one, click on this little number here, and then it makes it its own material. So now it's metal 1.001, and you can give this its own color, and now it's unique. So this has been this tutorial. So at this point, it's up to you guys to determine how you wanna color this, how you wanna light it. But I think this sort of abstract thing is really fun to do. It's really fun to play around with and make something, just a cool looking kind of render. I might make this a bit lighter value, but definitely experiment with it. Try out different concepts I'd like to see what you guys do. I don't always respond on the Instagram or the Discord server, but I do look at everybody's work and it's really cool what you guys are doing. So it's really impressive. 
But I'm gonna go with something like this for now. And let's go render and render image and let's see what this looks like. And here we have the final render. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. I will be uploading this result to my Patreon. I hope you guys have enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time for another Blender tutorial.